Jonathan Tater, of course, the, the man who has uh, seen it all happen before, and Keith Holder, our lead statistician and editor of the Sandra Quarterly. Gentlemen, good evening. You know, Tony, you would say something like this to you. You have seen this happen before. This is nothing new. How would you assess these latest developments in West Indies cricket? Well, it's all West Indies cricket board. I mean, I think I see both of you here with, uh, with computers. Uh, just going to Google, put West Indies cricket board in there, and you'll see time and again the same thing that's happening now. How many chief executive officers have we had over the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. uh, how many corporate secretaries, if you want to put it that way? How many captains have we had? How many managers? It's just perpetuating. And um, you know, the, 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 the frequent taunt from Jack Warner, who the, the, the football oh, czar, yeah, yeah. that cricket is dying. He's saying it's dying in the West Indies, really. Um, and that it's in its death throes is becoming more and more evident. It's becoming more and more factual. Um, and what has happened in this past week is just another, another upheaval. Has nothing to do with cricket. Has nothing to do with the standard of our cricket. It has to do with how many dollars were spent and were they spent on renovating the, the, the president's office in St. Lucia, mm -hmm. that type of thing. You then have uh, um, another row between the sponsors and the board over the Stanford 2020. Digicel feels that they should have been notified. All of this, nobody seems to be paying attention to the cricket. Which and is, no wonder the cricket is where it is. Which is quite sad. And Keith, bring us up to date. What really is happening with this situation with the CEO who was asked to go on administrative leave? Is that, uh, does that still stand? Well, Barry, actually, I have been in touch on a daily basis with the CEO, Dr. Donald Peters. And only tonight, I was driving over to Armory Hill and, you know, a letter fell off a truck and bam straight onto my laptop. And without going into all the pros and cons, it actually has come from the lawyer representing Dr. Peters, mm -hmm. Tony Astafan, who is a Queen's Council. Mm -hmm. And I think if I get an opportunity to read this letter, we will be able to put everything in perspective because he's in a nutshell saying Dr. Peters must be back on the job at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. So Dr. Peters will return to, to the West Indies Cricket Board Well, tomorrow. he has written to the president and he says, as you know, I have been asked by Dr. Donald Peters, CEO of the WICB, to assist him in relation to your letter dated 25th of July 2008. The letter is dated the very day the board meeting ended in St. Lucia. It goes on, I am writing this response on behalf of Mr. Peters as well as a friend of West Indies Cricket. Therefore, this response must not be construed as an attempt to further embarrass anyone. I do not intend at this stage to discuss or raise any issue in relation to the expenditure of funds by the board or the manner in which this expenditure was dealt with by all concerned. My sole concern at this time is the purported action of the president and board. It is my considered view that your letter dated 25th July is misconceived mm -hmm. and ought to be immediately withdrawn for the following reasons. One. There is no clause or provision of Mr. Peters' contract which required him to defend any allegation in the public media against the president, nor did the CEO do or fail to do anything which constitutes just cause under